Hey folks, hey Brad Miller with FlyBass.com with you today, and um, you know we we've all uh, this this is about uh, uh, well it's Valentine's Day and uh, 2014, and uh, you know we've had a heck of a uh, winter out here up in Minnesota, but it's nothing compared to what some of the folks have had down south. Um, as we speak, there's a heck of a storm just going through the eastern seaboard. I'm looking out the window here. I got some deer uh, feeding on some corn and stuff that we put out for them because. We've had a lot of snow up here this winter, and, and so some of us are, <clears throat> for better or for worse, uh, trying to help the animals out a little bit. We've got about a foot and a half to two feet of snow in the woods, and um, it's just kind of a tough winter all the way around. But it makes me think about fishing, oh, beautiful summer days, uh, uh, and, and traveling, and really having some fun out there. And today, <clears throat> today's topic is about uh, when you're going to travel, and... Not necessarily where you're going to travel, but think about the idea of, of, of tying supplies when you're there. And what what should you think about when you're looking at bringing along some fly tying materials with you? Um, and I'm going to specifically focus today on vices. I've got a line of, of some really nice traveling type vices, but I'm going to give you a few tips and some other things so that um, as you consider uh, getting mobile with your fly tying, um, you might consider some of these ideas. You know, way back when, I... Uh, I picked up a, uh, this is a, an old Lake Creek uh, traveler, and I don't, you can't get them anymore, but you can get things similar to them. And, you know, this one I just put in an old, I had an old Thompson, uh, Thompson vise in here, which I still have in here, and then I've taken out some of the fly tying tools, but there's places to put all your tools in here. And then on the other side um, is where you'd have all your, your different fly tying materials in there. And this thing worked really good. Uh, you know, we used to take a lot of trips to Montana, and we'd always take them on. We'd tie in the car, and we'd tie at the picnic table at night, and uh, just really have a great time tying flies. Because typically what happens is when you're traveling is you get to a place, and you may bring your own flies, um, but there's always some other pattern that you probably wish you probably would have had. And so um, uh, it's always good to have something in case you need to tie something on the spot. So. Let's get right into some of the um, uh, various levels of fly tying. Incidentally, you don't have to you don't have to get a uh, a fly tying kit per se. Um, some of them come preloaded with a bunch of different things on it, but it's almost more fun to put your own together. And 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 if you almost everybody's got one of these kind of cases laying around with a shoulder strap and a zipper and a few pockets, uh, they make a great traveler case for you. And then you can put the stuff in there. Some of the items that we have actually come with their own case and make it really handy for you. But the first one, I'm, the first vice I'm going to show you is called a um, Odyssey Spider from Griffin, and uh, it just comes in a little case like this. It comes in a little case like this, and um, so it's not really a, a traveling case as such. There is a bobbin cradle that comes with. These are all rotating vices, by the way. You can see that it comes with the uh, the C clamp which which all the travelers are going to come with a C clamp for locking onto a table and uh, it's not a bad idea if you if you can spare the weight to bring along a pedestal as well we'll talk about that in a minute the um, the Odyssey Spider um, is a true rotating uh, vice and you adjust the uh, tension by uh, loosening up this nut in the rear and then uh, tightening up that nut right there and then tightening it back up again. And it's just a real simple, nice little vise. Now, this one has got the uh, front thumb wheel on it to uh, adjust the um, aperture on the jaws. And I'll tell you what, um, the hook holding power of these Griffins are just incredible. Uh, even the, these go for about $95. So it's kind of a, quote unquote, sort of a lower end, but it's a full rotary. And they really work fantastic. Very light, very easy to use. Uh, it comes with a fairly long shaft on it, which is really designed for a uh, C-clamp. Okay, so the uh, Griffin uh, Odyssey Spider, just a very, very nice and affordable vise. I've got a fairly good size, almost like a saltwater hook in here, but it'll take hooks down to 22 and probably up to 2 watt. And it's very, very easy to adjust uh, the jaws here and to accommodate whatever, whatever hook size that you want. All right. So then we're going to step up. The next one we're going to get into is the Blackfoot Mongoose. And this one does come with a case. 
and, and you put all the whole everything you need with your vise right in there and here's what you're gonna get here's your bobbin cradle little assembly right here um, I've got the c-clamp hooked up on it um, I'm gonna take this c-clamp off for a minute and show you there's also a extension that comes with this vise um, right here for use with the C-clamp. If you're going to put it on a pedestal, you don't need as much height because you're going to be on a table. So then you can leave this extension off and just pop that into a, a pedestal. And if you've got a pedestal, uh, remember, almost every single vice maker, the shaft on their vices are 3 eighths of an inch. So any kind of a, a pedestal that you may have that will accommodate a 3 eighths inch stem will work. So you don't necessarily have to buy one, although uh, they are for sale as an accessory item if you need to get a pedestal. Um, same kind of deal, just sort of an upgraded uh, vice here a little bit. These go for about $145, $50. Um, a couple of things, there's a, you loosen up the Allen wrench back here to adjust the, um, the tension on the rotation. Again, a true rotary vice. Um, and then you adjust the tension right here. Now, I always leave them a little bit loose because there is that, the nut right here is used to fine tune these. And so you, so leave them a little bit loose here and then you can, you can tighten them up a little bit with that, that plastic uh, screw right there. And, and why is it, why is it plastic? Well, it's plastic for a good reason because if it was metal and it's going into the uh, axis here, it's going to groove into it. So if it's plastic, it's just a little bit easier on it. So uh, very nice. And of course, the mongoose, uh, the the Blackfoot mongoose, and then its its uh, big brother, uh, they come with this really cool uh, material clip. And you put this on extra, you can slide this around. Let me loosen that up just a little bit. So I can slide that down here, I can slide it up here, I can move the angle on it, whatever I want. And it's just kind of a, really a neat thing uh, that they've got here uh, and then of course the bobbin cradle which I'm going to get this out of the way again we've got a similar type of uh, jaws assemblage we can we're going to tighten up the aperture on the jaws with this uh, thumb screw here but which also really cool on the other side you can loosen up that one and you can slide this barrel up and down just to finely tune and, and everything so it works just just the way you'd like it to work so the blackfoot mongoose um, incidentally the turn style here um, I gotta tighten that up just a little bit so that's a little bit too much so I don't want it to with these rotors you don't want them to drop like that you want to put a little bit more tension on them so that it takes just a little bit more it holds its its uh, position well at any type of uh, part of the rotation now you use your finger here to as a as an accessory tool to move this around. You can also get an outrigger on this, which I'll show you in a minute, which I think is almost mandatory. So again, I've got a pretty good sized hook in here. Uh, but the Blackfoot Mongoose from Griffin, very very nice vice and a really nice little traveler. Okay, so the next one we're going to be looking at here. It's our top of the line. It's the Montana Mongoose. All right, and you can see that the the case the case is much more substantial. I kind of I, I get a get a kick out of it here. They've got this they've got this little pull sheet here so that you know that there's some stuff there's some stuff on the inside of the top here. You can actually put fly tying materials uh, inside here on top, and uh, you can get everything in one case. But these are a very nice, very substantial. Um, well-made case. Um, the, the other thing about these mongooses that I really like is, is they come with a C-clamp. They come with a C-clamp like this. But hiding underneath, hiding underneath there is a pedestal. So you've got everything that you want in a traveler, in, including a pedestal base if, if you want it. And if you're going to be set up for any length of time, 
and you're going to want to be moving stuff around. The pedestal is the way to go. So um, let's see what it looks like with the pedestal. Okay, so here is the Montana Mongoose. It's sort of the top of their line, true rotary vice. Uh, we'll get the bob and cradle out of there. Here's that handle I was telling you about, and you can buy this as an accessory item. This handle is probably the best extension handle uh, of any rotary vise that I've seen. As a matter of fact, some of the other rotary vices that I use, I actually use the uh, Griffin uh, extension, Mongoose extension on it because it just works better. It's a very, very nice extension. And it'll fit on to uh, almost all of the uh, drop-down handles on these. This one here, same kind of situation for tightening up here. Everything works the same way, except except the Montana Mongoose uses a different system for uh, holding the hook. And what we've got here is a cam lever. And so um, it's, it's very easy to adjust. But those of you that like the cam, maybe as opposed to the uh, tightening up with a thumb screw, these are really slick. And, and you pop this out, suppose the screw's going to fall out of there, or the hook's going to fall out of there, which it did. So very easy to uh, manipulate. Again, you've got the material clip on here. You've got that um, screw right here that you can actually adjust the height of um, the whole jaws assembly, which is really handy in some cases. Um, and again, you've got you kind of you kind of tune it here with the rotational tension, and then under here you've got that screw to uh, tighten it up just the way you want it, so the thing holds its position well. And again, I like to. I like to have it so that it holds its position in just about any type of any part of the axis that I'm going to be in. If I need to tighten it up a little bit, I can do so and it'll hold its position regardless of where I'm at. If I'm going to be doing a lot of turning with this thing, um, I might loosen it up just a little. The Montana Mongoose is the top of the line um, that, uh, that Griffin makes and Griffin, almost all of Griffin vices uh, are really, really uh, well made. They're made in Kalispell, Montana. So those of you that like to buy uh, items that are made in the United States, um, support the people in Montana, and uh, and Griffin is, are the people to, to support. Now, um, a couple other thoughts and ideas for you. If I'm, gonna, if I'm traveling, I'm going to have some kind of a fly tying light, and I use uh, one of these uh, that we sell, call, I call it a fly light, and um, this is an LED, uh, really a cool little thing. So I've got two different levels of lights that I can use. If I've got a couple people tying, I can wing that out and I can have it both ways. On, uh, if I've got somebody across from me tying at the table, um, just a nice night light for in your tent if, uh, if you're tenting it or wherever you might be. A really handy little light to use uh, when you're traveling and you just need some extra light. These, these are LEDs and they're really bright. And that's called the Fly Bass Fly Light, L-Y-T-E. So, some thoughts and ideas about traveling this season. Once this, uh, it's going to be a while before this snow is is gone, but uh, it will be one of these days. And uh, maybe you're going to sneak down to Florida, or maybe you're going to sleep sneak down to the Caribbean or someplace to do a little uh, salt water fishing. Um, bring some fly tying stuff along because you're probably going to uh, wish you had it along if you didn't bring it. Hey, Brad Miller with FlyBass.com. Uh, thanks for stopping by today, and uh, we'll see you on the water one of these days as soon as it melts. So long. Thank you.